In an automatic control system, a controller initiates a corrective action based on the difference between the signal it receives and the set point for a controlled variable. The various types of corrective actions that controllers can provide are called control modes. With two-position control, a signal from a controller causes a final control element to move from one extreme to another, such as from on to off or from fully opened to fully closed. To see how two-position control works, let's look at an illustration of a sump pump arrangement. In this system, a pump draws water out of a pit or sump. A float with a rod is the sensing element in the system. The float rod has two collars, which serve as stops for a linkage that connects the rod to a switch. It's part of an electrical circuit that starts and stops the sump pump motor. If the level in the sump rises, the float also rises, and the lower collar on the float rod pushes up the linkage to turn the switch on. This starts the sump pump motor. As the pump draws water out, the level in the sump drops, and the float moves down. When the water reaches the minimum level, the upper collar pulls down on the switch linkage, shutting off the pump motor. Now, in a two-position control system, a certain amount of change can occur in the process without causing a control system response. This amount of change is called the dead zone. The dead zone in this system is controlled by the positions of the two float rod collars. The dead zone can be reduced by moving the two collars closer together. A smaller change in level will then turn the pump on or off. But even though the water will be maintained at a more constant level, the pump will turn on and off more frequently. And this overuse could damage the system's components. With proportional control, a controller's output signal is proportional to its input signal. In other words, if the input to a proportional controller changes by a given amount, the controller's output will also change by a given amount. To explain proportional control, we'll use this illustration of an automatic level control system. We'll say that a temporary disturbance decreases the demand for water from the tank and causes the water's level to briefly surge above its set point. As the water rises, a level sensing float converts the change in level to mechanical motion. The motion is detected by a measuring element or transmitter and converted to a pneumatic signal representing the value of the higher water level. This signal is sent to the controlling element or controller. The controller measures the signal, compares the signal to set point, computes the difference between the two values, and produces a corrective output signal that's proportional to the input signal. The controller sends that signal to the final control element in the system, a control valve. The control valve responds by closing down to decrease the flow of water to the tank. However, because of process characteristics such as resistance, capacitance, and dead time, the level fluctuates before it finally returns to set point. We can tell more about how the temporary change in water level affected the system if we plot the control signals on a graph. On the graph, the scale on the far left is marked off in feet to indicate the water level in the tank. The next scale indicates the value of the input signal to the controller in pounds per square inch, or PSI. The scale on the right indicates the value of the output signal from the controller. It, too, is in pounds per square inch. The dashed horizontal line represents the set point for the water level. In this example, the set point is 3 feet, which is equivalent to a 9 PSI input signal to the controller and a 9 PSI output signal from the controller. In this case, it increased to 13 PSI. The output signal caused the control valve to close, decreasing the supply of water to the tank. As the level in the tank fell, the input and output signals decreased accordingly. However, the process characteristics that we mentioned caused the signals to go through several fluctuations or cycles before returning to set point. With a temporary disturbance, process conditions return to their original state. So, a proportional control system can normally return the controlled variable to set point. But, if a continual disturbance occurs, a proportional controller may not be able to restore original conditions. For example, this graph shows the input and output signals when an ongoing decrease in demand caused the level in the tank to rise. 
In this example, the control system brought the process back under control. But when it did, the level stayed higher than the original set point. That's because the input signal to the controller increased, then stayed high because of the continual disturbance. As a result, the proportional output signal stayed high as well. The higher steady state value that resulted, that is, the higher level that's represented by the input signal, is called the control point. The difference between the variable's control point and its original set point is called offset. Offset occurs because a proportional controller produces only enough output to bring a process back under control during a continual disturbance. It may not produce enough output to overcome the disturbance and return the process variable to its original set point. In some processes, a proportional controller may not return a process variable to its original set point. In other words, the controller's action may result in offset. However, a controller adjustment can sometimes be made to change the amount of offset. This adjustment affects what is known as the proportional band, or PB. Proportional band is the amount of output change, or delta output, in relation to a given amount of input change, or delta input. The proportional band value is usually multiplied by 100% so that it can be expressed as a percentage. When a controller's input change and output change are equal, the relationship between the signals is one-to-one, -one, and the proportional band is 100%. This condition is called a 100% PB. The input and output signals on this graph show a 100% proportional band. Now, the signals on this graph show a proportional band that's less than 100%, otherwise known as a narrow proportional band. With a narrow proportional band, a small change in input to the controller produces a larger change in output.